The uh, Rules Committee will come to order. We are here for consideration of a rule that will allow for uh, us to um, have a vote on a 90-day extension for the uh, transportation bill so that work can continue to try and bring about a, what we hope will be a wonderful bipartisan resolution. And uh, before I explain the, uh, the rule, why don't we entertain a motion and then we can... Uh, and into a discussion on that. The Chair recognize the gentleman from the Big D, Mr. Sessions. Mr. Chairman, I'm going to grant H.R. 4281, the Surface Transportation Extension Act of 2012, a closed rule. The rule provides one hour of debate equally divided and controlled by the Chair and Ranking Minority Member on the Committee on Transportation and Infrastructure. The rule waives all points of order against consideration of the bill. The rule provides that the bill shall be considered as read. The rule waives all points of order against provisions in the bill. The rule provides one motion to recommit. Finally, the rule waives. Clause 6A of Rule 13 requiring a two-thirds vote to consider a report from the Committee on Rules on the same day as reported the House against any resolution reported on the legislative day of March 29, 2012, provided that consideration or disposal of a measure extending expiring surface transportation authority. You've heard the uh, motion of the, would you spill the water? I'm a mess. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, we knew that already. So, um... So this uh, rule, uh, as we know, uh, provides for one hour of uh, general debate and uh, a motion to recommit. Uh, it provides for same-day authority for Thursday on measures related to an extension of the highway bill to ensure that we have the flexibility to keep the highway program operating, which obviously has got to be a priority as we continue to work through this. The bill is virtually identical to the uh, bill currently pending before the House. The only difference is that um, it extends by um, 30 days, the length of time, from uh, to 90 instead of the 60. And uh, as we all know, this was uh, this was always our our preference. And um, the 60-day uh, extension was what Senator Reid had been asking for. And um, obviously, uh, without Democratic support, that bill would fail. So um, we are actually pivoting to what we believe is our first choice to do the 90-day uh, extension. And uh, we hope very much that we will be able to uh, do this in a bipartisan way. Um, and um, so we have a couple of options that are before us. So are there any amendments um, to the rule? Yeah, I <clears throat> Surely. I, uh, understand. That, you know, that 90 days was your preference. Our preference was to take the Senate. Right, right. No, we understand that. you're not going to do that. Right. But would you explain to me, I, I think I heard what you said about the same-day authority right. for tomorrow only applies to the transportation To this bill, bill. yes. Uh -huh, yeah. so, this one before us. Right. This is, you know, we're doing this. Uh, excuse me? Yeah, yeah. Any any measure that relates to the highway bill so is what we would do tomorrow. So you change the... the uh, well, obviously, all this does is give the authority. Well, yeah, we still have that pending in the House, mm -hmm. as you know. You still have the possibility of right. a vote on that. And no. so, you know, what we're trying to do, I mean, our goal is very simple here. We know that there's not a, a bipartisan agreement or a bicameral mm -hmm. agreement on this. And with the end of the month approaching, and we don't want to see this expire, and so we're trying to figure out a way in which we can do this. I mean, this was our first choice to do a 90-day extension so that there would be the ability to have uh, the kinds of uh, discussions that would allow us to have, again, I mean, I'm, I'm serious when I say the goal of a bipartisan, bicameral uh, transportation bill, which I think is something that lots of us would like to have happen. So what we've got here is just uh, the opportunity to deal with this and to provide some flexibility for the scheduling for both today and tomorrow. I remember when we first started to talk about this bill, and, and we were all bemoaning the fate on our side. Mm -hmm that this was the first time since Dwight Eisenhower that we didn't have a bipartisan bill. We right. didn't have anything to do with this bill. We know that. So 60 days, 90 days, we, uh, we're starting in the Northeast where I live mm -hmm. to really start to come into the construction season. That's in 90 right. days, I don't know what anybody's going to do in 90 days. Right. Uh, so as far as I'm concerned with my vote, I would much prefer to see the Senate bill uh, sure. or at least to... Uh, take up a longer term. So right. Well, I mean, no we're, we're hoping that we'll be able to get again to, and I think having this period of time, we want, I mean, I recognize construction season, how important mm -hmm. it is, especially, you know, in yeah. your part of the world. I, I, I recognize that, and we very much want to get there, and I think that's the goal that we have. Mr. Governor. Can, can, can you enlighten us? What is the, pro, what is the problem? Um, 
uh, with amongst House Republicans with the transportation bill. I mean, the Senate bill passed by, you know, 77, yeah. 77 to 22. Um, you know, you had polar opposites like Barbara Boxer and Jim Inhofe come together and agree on this. I mean, you know, you all talk about bipartisanship. I mean, you, I, you have the ultimate bipartisan kind of coalition over the Senate. What is, what is, what is, what, what is the problem? on this side with the House Republicans when it comes to the transportation well, I, saying, I think we have made history with Jim McGovern holding up the work product of the United States Senate as a yeah, great no, model you know. for us here. So usually uh, kind, they, of a, usually, kind, of a, kind of an impressive – Usually uh, they obstruct uh, things. Uh, so I mean, question to, to us. Right yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it we're obstructing things? Right. I'm just trying to figure out what, what, is, the, what is the issue that, that – that, that, that there obviously – we have seen a, a work product emerge from the Transportation Infrastructure Committee. And – uh, again, I hope that as we bring about a resolution, this there will be bipartisan support for it. There were concerns that have been raised, and obviously, we want to make sure that as we proceed with a very important transportation and infrastructure bill, that it brings about the most cost-effective means to do this. And I believe that members of the House Transportation Committee have been working on that, as have other members. Uh, we know that we're dealing this, dealing with this, in a climate that is different than has been the case in the past. And so we're not going to be the ones negotiating that from the Rules Committee. What we're doing is we're trying to ensure that we can provide, the House can provide, for a structure that will not see the expiration take place, which is in a matter of a couple of weeks, or excuse me, it's next week. Uh, and we want to ensure that that doesn't happen. And uh, we want to see a period of time that will allow them to come together to resolve these issues. So are there any amendments to the yeah. rule? No, but let me just say 90 sure. days is really almost insulting to give to people who are trying to plan to build roads and construct. Right. Well, I mean, we hope that in that period of time, we hope very much that in that period of time we'll be able to see a resolution. Well, they've been the hoping I mean, that for a very long time. Right. No, I know. I don't but think they're very well modified. Where there's life, there's hope. There's and there's life here in the Rules Committee, and there's life here in the Congress. And uh -huh. I continue to have a great deal of hope that we'll be able to see this resolved, as I know my colleagues do. The vote occurs on the uh, motion of the I gentleman. Have an oh, I'm sorry. I, I thought we'd heard from you. But no. happy no, you to heard from me, but you, you, I have an amendment now. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. I'm, uh, Chair recognizes the gentleman from Worcester for an but, amendment to the rule. Mr. Chairman, I have an amendment to the rule. I move the committee make an order and give the necessary waivers for the amendment by Mr. Ray Hall, number one, which is an amendment in the nature of a substitute. It would just put in the text of the bipartisan Senate Transportation Bill, which passed uh, 74 to 22, and which this House has refused to take up. And if I could just be heard for one Surely. minute on this, um, I would just say to my colleagues, um, I want to echo it with, with what the ranking member, um, Mr. Slaughter, has said about the fact that, um, you know, we have governors and we have mayors and we have t city managers who are, you know, looking for some certainty over a period of more than 60 to 90 days. Uh, and, they've been, and, they've, and they're quite frankly frustrated why a, uh, you know, a, a, a bill could pass in an overwhelmingly bipartisan way in the Senate and we can't even bring one to the floor here. The Senate bill has uh, higher funding levels. Um, and uh, it will create uh, approximately 1.9 million jobs as guaranteed funding for public transit, something that the House bill unfortunately gutted. Um, it continues to expand upon provisions developed during the last Service Transportation Act uh, to expedite project deliver deliver delivery without gutting environmental protections or limiting public participation. And I just, in just in terms of process, I mean, I, 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 um, I tr if I'm not on the floor, I try not to watch the floor, but I watched the debate today on the rule between uh, our ranking member, Mr. Woodall. And I couldn't, I was, uh, Mr. Woodall uh, very enthusiastically t talked about, uh, you know, how he believes in an open process and, and how the, and, and how, uh, uh, and how proud he is of this rules committee for allowing all, um, all ideas to be uh, debated. And, um, uh, and, uh, and I would say, um, you know, um, you know, that uh, here we have a, 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 right before us, a very different process. Uh, this is an emergency meeting. Uh, there was not a come one, come all notice sent out on this bill. Uh, this is a completely closed well, rule. you were invited, so. Yeah, there's a completely closed rule. The, rank, the ranking member of the Transportation Committee has asked one, one, one request of this, of this committee, and that is to make his amendment in order. Uh, we, also, all we're asking you to do is let the ranking member on the Transportation Committee to offer one substitute. 
We're asking that you let the House work its will on this bipartisan bill to fix our infrastructure and put America to work. I mean, the, uh, the House is out on Friday. Uh, you know, I, if, if, the, if there's a question of you want to make sure that we get something done, you know, we, can stay here on, we can stay here on Friday. We can do the Bishop bill, and we can do a Republican bill, and let, let us have it out. And, you know, but right now, you're, you know, you're bringing to the floor uh, just uh, you know, a very, very um, limited bill that we think is not going to do anything to help jobs or create any certainty, and under a very, very closed process, and you are locking, you're basically locking out the uh, ranking member. And so I would urge my colleagues to vote for this amendment. Let me just say that uh, it's difficult to imagine a more closed process than to take the 1,600-page bill to pass the Senate without even a modicum of consideration by any committee in the United States House of Representatives and to put that Okay. Oh, I, I assumed that you were completed. I didn't ask oh, you to yield. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, I'm, go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, since you brought that up, I mean, I, you've been ch changing, giving us different bills on this transportation uh, issue on and off. We don't, we, 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 don't, we, don't even, we, we don't even know whether tomorrow we will have the same bill we're talking about here today. You, you've given yourself same day authority. I, when I finish this, okay. you give yourself same day authority to bring up something entirely different. So, I mean, there's no committee, bipartisan committee deliberation going on on this issue. Uh, the ranking member says he and his members have been locked out of the process. So all we're saying is, you know, I mean, you, this bill has been around for two weeks. Members have had a chance to read it if they are, are interested. Um, you know, stay in until Friday. I don't care. You, 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 look, I review it until then. But this process on a transportation bill, which is a jobs bill, is just plain unfair. Uh, and I'll tell you, this is the, the, these kinds of, this kind of inaction by this Congress is one of the reasons why this economy isn't recovering at a faster pace. So I would, I would urge you to at least let us have this opportunity. And I yield back my time. I thank my friend. And let me just uh, let me make a couple of points in response. First of all, as I said, um, we have a 1,600-page bill that did, in fact, pass the Senate, but no committee in the House of Representatives has considered this measure. We have... Uh, what we're talking about now is a, a very simple goal. I don't think that my friend is interested in seeing this entire program come to a halt, which is what will happen if we do not take action. We're working to do the responsible thing here. There is not an agreement. There is not an agreement on this. And the idea behind providing 90 days, and the question is whether we do a 90 or 60 day extension. There may be a vote on a 60 day extension. The fact is we are trying to keep the program open, keep this uh, transportation operation open, number one, and number two, ensure that there is a time so that Mrs. Slaughter's concerns will be able to be addressed, so that we'll be able to have a long-term transportation bill. If the gentleman would like me to yield, I'm happy to yield. I just would point out to you that the chairman of the Transportation Committee, Mr. Micah, today alone has introduced two different bills, one 60 pages long, one 90 pages long, and by passing this rule, we are essentially given the majority, same day authority. If you choose, I, mean, I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, I, we're having votes late tonight, I guess, so you can do some counting. But whatever, whatever comes out of uh, out of your out of your whipping, I mean, you're basically giving yourself authority to bring up any one of those bills uh, tomorrow or something entirely different. And so, you know, I would just this bill by the Senate was passed, um, you know, two was it two weeks ago, and. Um, you know, and again, I, I think we ought to have an opportunity to vote up or down on it. Thank you. I understand. And I, I uh, yield to the gentleman from uh, Georgia. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I want to say to my friend from Massachusetts and my, my friend from New York, I, I agree with you 100 percent about certainty. And, and I thank the, the chairman not only for running the most open rules committee that I've seen in, uh, in my uh, couple of decades of watching uh, this, uh, this place, uh, but for trying to put us in a place where we can provide that certainty. I, I hear you talking about a two-year uh, vote tomorrow. We're here about a five-year uh, vote. I, I don't know who the bridge builders are in your district, who the road builders are in your district, who tell you that two years is much better than 90 days, that what folks want is a real long-term solution, five years, seven years, something that they can actually plan for. And I, I absolutely hope we do get a chance. Uh, to vote on on some of the suggestions that uh, that the ranking member, Mr. Rahal, has, but not in the context of a simple extension that's going on tomorrow. If you short-circuit this project 
If you short circuit the builders in, in my district back home, in your district back home, by tying them in to a, to a rushed through two year bill, you know why they got that kind of agreement on the Senate? Because this is an awful, awful bill. And you can get that kind of agreement on an awful bill. I'd be happy to yield. I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll yield to uh, I'm, I'm yield to, to uh, Oh, yes, Woodall. you did. I'm sorry. Yes, I'm happy, I'm happy to yield. I'm happy Dryer, to yield. Thank you very much. Nobody in my district with, uh, is, is going to try to plan anything within 90 days. Mm -hmm. It's not going to work. And all I'm going to get is yelling and hollering about what in the world is going on down there. That's all we're getting now. Uh, the state of New York is wondering when in the world we're ever going to get around to do this bill. And they point out Mm -hmm. That two weeks ago would have been uh, not too soon uh, to have that so they can get ready for something. The vote occurs on the uh, mm -hmm. amendment of the gentleman from uh, Worcester. Those in favor will say aye. Mr. Chairman. No. No. The gentleman seeking recognition on the uh, McGovern uh, Amendment? Uh, no. I, I, I was. Uh, and I didn't I, know that. That's all right. I, um, I'm concerned, Mr. Chairman, and I put it to you uh, uh, frankly. First, I agree thoroughly um, uh, with uh, Ms. Slaughter. Um, there are people uh, in the construction uh, industry that decry uh, the uncertainty uh, uh, that uh, has existed with reference to transportation. And yes, there have been uh, those um, uh, that have argued for us uh, to do a rather substantial bill for a protracted period of time. The 90-day provision is going to cause a loss of jobs. And I, I, I query you as to whether or not um, uh, the fact that some construction projects are halted, a lot will not be entered into because they don't know what the particulars are likely to look like, then how is it that we are creating jobs by uh, causing a delay in jobs uh, being made available to people? And do you agree that this 90-day extension will not create jobs? Well, let me, uh, if the gentleman would yield, yes. I thank my friend for yielding. And let me just say that um, I look at the transportation bill as uh, designed uh, not as a job creator bill. I see that as a very important byproduct of ensuring that we have the infrastructure in the United States so that we can engage in goods movement and other things. And so uh, I do believe that job creation is a byproduct, but I don't see this simply as a bill to create jobs. It's a very important thing that needs to be done. Now, having said that, I will say that uh, because I don't, I don't want the government just to be in the business of, of creating jobs through government programs. And again, I see it as part of our goal of improving our nation's infrastructure. I do think, and I can't tell you whether I believe a 60 versus 90 day, I, too, I do believe this. What we're trying to do is ensure that we don't see all of this come to an end tomorrow, mm -hmm. this weekend. And we, that's why, or day after, we're trying to get this done as expeditiously as we can. We're trying to find a solution to the problem. You all have thrown out your proposal. That is for us to immediately take up the 1,600-page Senate bill, which uh, we do not support the Senate bill. And that's the reason that we're trying to bring about a resolution that could have some of the provisions in the Senate bill, pass a House bill, and then see if we can resolve them and come to a bipartisan, bicameral agreement. That's what needs to be done to get things going. So Mr. in the midst of that, we're trying to do this 90 days. I thank my I friend for yielding. Yes, I, uh, uh, I, I'm almost breathless at what you just said with reference to um, the infrastructure bills um, being uh, only a byproduct to job uh, creation. It, that, all, all, all of the gentlemen yield. Let me just say, sure, what I, said was, I said I see jobs as, a, as byproduct. a byproduct. No, as a byproduct of this transportation measure. I don't. I, I, I don't support the notion of infrastructure development simply to create jobs. I believe there has to be a goal, and I see a byproduct of our goal of making sure we have the best infrastructure in the United States as job creation. Okay, then if you're in the construction business. And this, particularly in the Northeast and the Midwest, um, is the period, April, May, and June, when you are likely to be able to roll in your projects. And what you're going to wind up with is stymied uh, projects. I don't care. You can name it anything you want. You can name it byproduct. It's a job. And a billion dollars spent on infrastructure 
creates jobs. Now, whether it's done as a byproduct or whether it's done as a government function is a part of our responsibility. Added to that are the maintenance requirements, the trust funds, all of the gas tax, all of those things are in instrumental in what we are doing here. And by delaying it, when there is a bill that has passed, 7422 in some place over there that hardly ever does anything, and for us to pass up on that opportunity, when do you think then we will have a transportation measure? For however long it is, one year, two years, ten years, whatever we do, when do you think it's going to happen? Would the gentleman yield? Sure. I thank my friend for yielding, and let me say that um, I don't know when we're going to have it. I can't tell you and when we're going to have it. And therein lies the problem. Okay, I thank That's my friend uncertain. for yielding. I thank my friend for yielding. Would the gentleman further yield? Does the gentleman yield back? Sure, I Okay, yield. thank you. Well, let me just, let me just say that um, if we don't take action, Saturday night, the entire program comes to an end. This is our choice that we face right now. Are we going to deal with the problem that is before us, or are we going to take a bill which we know is not going to pass the House, this Senate bill, and, uh, and proceed with uh, concerning it, which would exacerbate the challenge that we face right now, and that, that challenge is to ensure that this program doesn't come to an end on Saturday. And so for that reason, um, I, I believe that whether it's a 60-day or a 90-day measure, as I said, a 90-day was our first choice, a 60-day was the request of Senator Reid, we are trying to ensure that Saturday night does not lead to a shutdown of the program. And I hope we can have bipartisan support. We could to stay here. That we, we could stay here and work this Let out. Let me just so tell you, that we're, we're, staying here would not work this out. That's why we need to have an extension, a period of time, so that we can see the House and Senate do this. The, uh, the vote occurs on the McGovern Amendment. Those in favor will say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. No. And sure the no's have it. The no's have it. Clerk, call the roll. Chairman. No. Uh, I. I. Yes. No, Mr. Clerk. And the amendment is not agreed to. There are further amendments. If not, the vote occurs. On, oh, I'm sorry. Further amendment. Oh. This is discussion on the. Uh, Please. The gentleman's recognized. Thank you. Um, well, I, I, I guess I would actually ask the chair. Um, the chair has mentioned a couple times that the. Senate bill uh, would not pass the House. I was just wondering how the, how the chair chair knows that. I mean, there might why not let the House work its will and see whether well, it passes. Well, you know, the uh, if the gentleman I'll be yield, yield, I thank I'll my yield friend for yielding. And let me just say that uh, obviously the idea of bringing a 1,600-page bill to the floor without having ever gone through any kind of committee process at all is not regular order. And we uh, would like to, as Mr. Woodall said, allow for consideration of proposals that that Mr. Ray Hall and others who are on the Transportation Committee have. But, you know, and we, we need to get through passing a, a House bill, and uh, that would be regular order. And so what we want to do is we want to allow the House to work its will. Having this, whether it's a 60 or 90-day extension, to uh, allow us to try and complete that is our goal. And I, it's my hope that we'll end up with a, a very bipartisan measure. And I recognize that at this point, it has not been as the gentleman mentions I, regular I thank my friend for yielding. Thank you. The Chair mentioned regular order. Is this... Uh, Short-term extension through regular order, has that been through committee? This short-term extension <clears throat> is one which is designed to simply continue exactly what we have today. And but, uh, yeah, it's regular order in that we don't want to see the program well, closed down well, on Saturday. This is well, it's, well, an urgent issue that does need to be addressed. Well, there's no disagreement about the urgency, but I, I think uh, this bill, in fact, has not been through regular order. I mean, therefore, the argument that the Senate bill has not been through regular order, neither has the short-term bill. It has not been marked up by committee, the short-term extension. Well, to say, that an extension, to say that an extension, a simple extension, is not uh, regular order, we're dealing with uh, a situation that confronts us this weekend. And so well, but, but that's, a 1,600-page bill versus yeah. a simple extension but, uh, of current law. No, I mean, as, as, but as the chair recognizes, I mean, regular, the definition of regular order is it comes to this committee after it passes its committee of jurisdiction. So I just want to be clear that this short-term extension did not come to this committee through regular order, yeah. uh, if, that, if that is correct. Everyone is well aware of the situation that we face right now. Yeah. That situation is, guess what happens on Saturday? 
I mean, does the gentleman yeah. know what happens on Saturday? The, 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 we, of that, and, and it is regular order for us to take action to ensure that we don't see the end to a very important program that we have. Again, the gentleman will find no disagreement about the urgency of the issue from anybody on our side of the aisle. Uh, again, uh, by, uh, but to say that somehow this committee taking up a bill that has never been through a committee of jurisdiction is regular order is redefining what regular order is. I mean, it's if simply not. Understands, if everyone understands the urgency, then we should immediately move this from the Rules Committee to the House floor so that we can ensure that Saturday does not come and go with the program coming to an end. Mr. But, Chairman, I, Ms. Slaughter. I, I, I yield back. I yield back. Side that we have understood the urgency of this problem Good. because of what we're hearing from our constituents at home for at least the two weeks when everybody said to us, why don't you take up that bipartisan Senate bill? Mm -hmm. uh, so we're perfectly aware Good. of the urgency. We just don't know that this Thank is going to solve Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Order occurs on the motion from Dallas. Those in favor will say aye. Those opposed, aye. no. Aye. No. Aye. no. Aye. Call, Clerk, call the roll. Mr. Sessions. Aye. Mr. Sessions votes aye. Ms. Fox. Aye. Ms. Fox votes aye. Mr. Bishop. Mr. Woodall. Aye. Mr. Woodall votes aye. Mr. Nugent. Aye. Mr. Nugent votes aye. Mr. Scott. Aye. Mr. Scott votes aye. Mr. Webster. Yes. Mr. Webster votes aye. Ms. Slaughter. No. Slaughter votes no. Mr. McGovern. No. Mr. McGovern votes no. Mr. Hastings. No. Mr. Hastings votes no. Mr. Polis. No. Mr. Polis votes no. Mr. Chairman. Aye. Mr. Chairman votes Mr. aye. Mr. Clerk. Seven yay, four nay. And the amendment is agreed, the motion is agreed to, and this will be managed uh, on the floor by uh, our friend from Florida, Mr. Webster, by the, the majority, McGovern. and Mr. McGovern from minority. We hope very much that this is our last meeting of the week. And uh, as I said yesterday, I hope everyone has a happy Easter and a happy break, and I hope I never have to say it again, at least to this committee. <laughs>